what's up everyone welcome back to the channel thank you so much for stopping by you didn't have to there's so many other places you could have been at this moment but i appreciate you stopping here on my channel and paying a visit we're going to listen to bonnie ray today we're going to listen to the track i can't make you love me uh, which is off of the album luck of the draw released in 1991. So I want to keep this brief because I want to dive really quickly just into a story. Uh, I've never listened to anything from Bonnie Ray. I don't know a thing about her. Uh, her name came up a lot of, of times in the comments, but always with different song suggestions. So I'm just going with this particular track. Okay, I'm going to talk about something super quick that has nothing to do with this video, nothing to do with music at all, but I wanted to use this opportunity to, to talk about this. I don't know. I, I think it was kind of neat uh, in a certain way. And of course, if it's your first time or you just want to skip ahead, just skip a minute or so. I'm going to try and make this a quick story. So I was driving on the way back home from work and, you know, it's rush hour, it's five o'clock, it's just busy. And I'm on the right lane and I'm getting ready to make a turn at some point. Two cars ahead of me, this, the car just stops suddenly in the road. I mean, just suddenly. Person in front of me slams their brakes, I slam their brakes. And naturally your intention is like, you know, there may be some hands that come up, there may be some windows that roll down, but, you know. I don't do all that but but you know that's like your initial reaction and the car that had stopped was kind of turning into this little driveway of a business like a street kind of area and there was a homeless lady riding her bike coming towards us on the sidewalk the lady who was in that front car that stopped passenger door opened and a lady got out and I gotta be honest the way that everything stopped and the way the lady came out of the car I thought something was going to go down and I was kind of like do I need to leave? The lady that got out of the car walked, stopped the homeless woman who was riding her bike right there and gave her the biggest hug I have ever seen someone receive, uh, like period. I don't know what the story was, but I could tell that that lady needed that that day. I, I don't know what happened, but it was just one of those really random heartwarming moments. And of course it's it's a sad situation, whatever, whatever was going on. I don't know, there was something personal happening, but it was just an incredible moment. And then as I made my turn coming down my street coming home, I saw a commercial vehicle and they were pulled over in the middle lane and right in front of them was just a random car. And the, the uniformed worker was like fixing, the, or not fixing, changing the tire for the person in front of them. I gotta tell you, in the span of like 30 seconds, I saw these two things happening. And I just wanted to say this, <laughs> there's a lot of hate, division, angst, anxiety, negativity in all of our lives, in the world, etc., etc. But you gotta look out for those moments and you gotta look out to be part of those moments when you can. You can make that positive change in someone's life. You can be that small thing that just makes someone's day. Could be something as small as a smile, big as a hug, or, or changing someone's tire. You, like there's just so many things. Anyways, like I said, this has nothing to do with like the video, but I did think that was worth sharing. And, that was that was just one of those moments like you're like i don't know what the story is but it was a special moment you know anyways let's go ahead and listen to the track <laughs> sorry to, to make you guys wait for the reaction uh let's go ahead and listen to it i can't make you love me let's dive in Didn't the, the piano notes at the end, that last little brief sprinkling, that little flurry, sound like it ended on a positive note? Like the whole song is very dramatic, but like the ending, like it kind of springs up a little bit. Anyways, just something to grab my attention. Okay, Bonnie Ray. Oh, let's talk about this track. Watch this, watch this. When I play the first uh, second or two of this track, what do you feel? Right there. Take away the name of the song, take away the lyrics, just for those three seconds there, what do you feel? What do you hear from that music, right? I don't know about you, but I'm hearing sexy, I'm hearing sensual, this is hot, this is, whoa, what's going on here, right? And you're like, okay, and the mood carries through for the rest of the track, no doubt. I love the dramatic tension that the piano builds throughout. I, I love the way the piano is being played uh, in this track. On here, it's gonna be Bruce Hornsby. 
uh, on the piano. And then you also have some springs of organ. You got some extra percussion that comes in. A lot of tiny little elements that just add a certain breath to the music. But I want to talk about the mood. The mood is overbearingly sensual, right? And that's nice, of course. It's romance. It feels good. But then when you're looking at the lyrics and listening to Bonnie herself, turn down the lights, turn down the bed. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Turn down these voices inside my head. Okay, lay down with me, tell me no lies. I like that. Just hold me close, don't patronize, don't patronize me. Okay, so there's this weird kind of contrast, like hold me, don't patronize me. Uh, you know, lay down with me, tell me no lies. Like there's this, I want you, but there's some, there's some issue happening, right? Okay, keep it. Hey, we're doing this together. Because I can't make you love me if you don't. You can't make your heart feel something it won't. Amongst, this is just my mind canon listening to this. Amongst this, this final night that her and whoever her lover is, this final night that they're sharing, they know that this is coming down to an end. The fire is now smoldering ashes. And as the morning comes, those ashes will be blown away. But for this, this last moment for this final night don't lie to me but make me feel the same way we used to feel so because of the way the lyrics go now just because of the way the music is playing that mood is romantic but it's also kind of like there's a little bit of a side eye to it now there's a little bit of like yeah this is romantic still but at the same time there's an ending and a finality to this and I think that the way the music captures that emotion, specifically from, of course, the piano, Bonnie singing, which is immaculate. Love the, the little hints of sadness and maybe not regret, but like, man, we're losing something. You know, there's those little hints of heartbreak uh, that are strewn throughout this song that I think are just fantastically composed, especially with the way the lyrics work in lieu of the, the music itself. Because if you change the lyrics, if you change the lyrics and made it like a typical love song, it still works, but it's the extra hints of, of feeling and character that Bonnie puts in here that really changes the mood of the music to something just a little bit more, for lack of a better word, maybe not desperate, but trying to hold on to something that you know you're going to have to eventually let go of. I'll close my eyes, then I won't see the love you don't feel when you're holding me. Listen to the way that she says that line and how she delivers it. You can hear the pain that she she feels when she delivers that line because that is a painful line i'll close my eyes then i won't see kind of blinding yourself to the realities that you're presented with here the love you don't feel when you're holding me morning will come i'll do what's right just give me till then to give up this fright this fight rather and i will give up this fight then there's that little bit of affirmation she says give me the time to give up this fight and then she reaffirms to herself and to us, the audience, I will give up this fight. This is good. This is good. And then the very ending, don't try, baby. Ain't no use in you trying, baby. It, it's done. It's done. Cat's out of the bag. The sand's out of the hourglass. And the water is out of, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making this up as I go. Let's go ahead and uh, look into this a little bit here. So it seems that, uh, let's see, this was written by Mike Reed and Alan Shamblin, and of course recorded by Bonnie Ray for this album. It says that it was the album's second single and it reached the top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 and the top 10 on the adult contemporary charts. Uh, it says that the idea for this song came to Reed while reading an article about a man arrested for getting drunk and shooting at his girlfriend's car. The judge asked him if he had learned anything, to which he replied, I learned, Your Honor, that you can't make a woman love you if she don't. Well, yeah, one way to definitely not do that is to shoot into their car. Uh, Ray recorded the vocal in just one take in the studio, later saying it was so sad a song that she could not recapture the emotion. We try to do it again, and I just said, you know, this ain't going to happen. I think that that's really cool, like what she said there. That first take, you know, obviously she, you know, you know read the lyrics and felt it and everything. But that first take was the most genuine. That, that first take was the most realistic. And she even said, you know, they tried again and again. And, you know, it was just like, no, that first take is, is the true. That's, that's the feeling right there. I think that that's fantastic. I think the musicianship in here was really good. Uh, like I said, you have Bruce Hornsby piano, Ben Mont Tench on the organ. You hear a little bit of that Hammond there. Uh, 
Well, it's either going to be him or... Yeah, it is going to be him, actually. Uh, is it? Yeah, Ben Munchen. Sorry, have to make sure I have the right names and everything. Um, and I don't know if this is true because I just heard this song for the first time right now. But you hear that organ on the second half, like from the second verse forward. I don't know if it was there in the first verse. But it's so subtle, you, you barely notice it. But it is a nice little touch in there. Uh, and like I said, you have that extra percussion here by Paulinho de Costa. Just very light, very sparse in the back. You would miss it if you didn't listen to the song. Which I guess you would miss everything if you didn't listen to this song. Let me know what you guys thought of the track in the comments down below. You can follow me over on Patreon and support me over there for as little as $2 a month. You don't have to, but it does help me in what I do here. Um, let me know if this is like Bonnie Ray, if this is like what her sound is, or if she has a different style, a different sound. I would love to hear the opposite side of this particular coin. So thank you guys so much for the recommendations. Thank you for the guidance, etc., etc., etc. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Boop, and I'll talk to you later. Bye, guys. <laughs>